So this is Duo Contratante at Home, Nancy and Tim here. We're going to talk to you today about performance issues and this episode is called In the Heat of the Moment. So to start off, we're going to talk about one phrase that I'm sure we've all heard countless times from teachers and friends and colleagues, and that is, when you perform, stay positive. Think positive thoughts. A lot easier said than done, we know, we know. You have to accept one fact about performing, and that is that you will feel vulnerable. And that vulnerability makes you feel weak and uncomfortable, but that vulnerability also connects you with your audience. They want to see that you're human. They want to see you take risks and live the performance in a real human way. Something that can be really debilitating to your mindset is focusing on perfectionism. Some kind of utopia view of your performance on stage. Like that is just not helpful. Um, accept the fact that you're human, that you're flawed, all art is flawed in some way, and that is actually what people are relating to. We have vulnerabilities, as Tim said, and we have imperfections, and that's all good. There's no blueprint for performance. One of the things I try not to do is to relive the whole performance even before I've performed, and thinking about all the booby traps that are coming up down the road. Try not to think about that. When you get on stage, just sit down and start at the beginning and work your way through the piece. That's excellent. Thank you. It's super important to have epic fails now and then. And a lot of those happen on stage. And this is how you learn. This is how you grow. This is how you get stronger. There's no way to avoid having them. One time I was doing a audition for a concerto competition behind a screen. I did a big up bow. This was in the Tchaikovsky concerto where you go dum dum up up bum and I did those two up bows and my bow hit the edge of the bridge and moved the bridge over a centimeter and I didn't even notice. So I start the next scale on the G string and the G string has moved a few millimeters past the fingerboard and there was no G string really to play on. And at that point from behind the screen I say, can you just hold on a minute while I move my bridge back in place? <laughs> I think it's really important to kind of recognize the fact that there's many great artists who are not natural performers and they've worked long and hard at being able to have wonderful performances. Someone who I think the world of and who is a great artist who once said to me, performing is the price you pay for doing what you love. The message here is it is not always easy. We often come into performance with really high expectations for what's going to happen. And that can also be super debilitating. So, you know, the most you can kind of hope for is your last dress rehearsal. Right, Tim? Right. You have to practice performing. This whole notion that you prepare for one performance is just kind of silly. That's not the way it works. You need to be performing continuously. I know that when we go on tour and we do, I don't know, 10 or 12 performances, by the end, we're feeling pretty confident. And then when we have two or three weeks off and we're back at it again, those first couple can seem kind of scary. Yep. It just takes time. But only go out on stage when you're really ready. Don't just perform for the sake of performing. A couple more ideas about staying positive when you perform. Posture is really, really important. Don't keep your head buried in the score. I have a very good friend, I guess you could say, he's a very intelligent fellow. When he talks about posture, he always says heart high, which I really like. There's an emotional implication there. And good posture with, with your head up will inspire bravery, I think, if you're all playing and looking around and trying to communicate. The other thing is that all performers need to learn is how to talk to your audience. Not only because they actually want to hear from you, but it'll also help you. It helps with nerves just to speak to them and acknowledge that they're there and communicate them just normally as a, as a human being. And that's something you have to practice. And there are many different techniques to get better at doing that. It's not so easy, but you will get better. Personally, I like having just a couple of ideas in my head and then I'll go out and just sort of, I don't want to say wing it, but I find if I have too many ideas, then I just get worried that I'll forget them, which leads to more anxiety, more depression more weakness, more vulnerability. Okay, okay. Keep in mind that even if you've prepared as best you can and worked on all your performance techniques, there's still lots of things out of your control. 
when you get to a new hall. I remember one time we were in the UK on the coast and we were playing in a church that was built in the 800s. Well, part of it was. Okay, part of it was. And it was the part that was that we played in. So there was no heating there. And it was late winter, early spring. And I had planned on wearing a beautiful strapless gown of some sort and got there and realized it was, you know, three degrees Celsius in this room. And so I had to ask to borrow all of these sweaters. The whole audience was decked out in every wool item they had in their closet. It was really, really cold. And it went okay, but it wasn't what I was visualizing was going to happen. I remember that concert. And before the concert, we went to a cafe. This little town was right on the coast. And we sat in this cafe, and they were all still talking about the Battle of Britain. So I went into the concert extra prepared, all ready to call fighter command. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below and click subscribe. And if you'd like more information about the Tuckamore Festival, please visit tuckamorefestival.ca. Thank you. Bye-bye.